Thank you, Chairman. Um, I wanted to, uh, first of all, uh, associate myself with the comments that Senator McCaskill made earlier. Um, it is just absurd that it's been 631 days that we have an, a permanent inspector general at the VA. And I'll join. I've written numerous times to the President of the United States, but um, if the President really cares about getting this uh, right, then he'll nominate a permanent inspector general. Uh, and I think it says a lot, unfortunately, that people on both sides of the aisle have asked him to do that, and we're 631 days into it, and I think our men and women in uniform deserve better than that so that you can have permanent leadership uh, on this very, very important oversight issue. And um, I agree with Senator McCaskill. If these things are, if the IG positions are going to go vacant, then, you know, I previously uh, also sponsored uh, the vacant IG Act that she and Senator Bozeman have introduced that would put Congress in a position to actually nominate these positions if the executive branch abdicates its responsibility. I wanted to follow up on the wait list because, Dr. Clancy, uh, the VA, of course, with what we went through and last summer with the revelations of the wait list and the manipulated wait list and veterans literally who were died waiting for care, um, and you talked about the fact that the VA is making progress. But as I understand it, there have been different estimates. Only a handful of people have actually been fired as a result of what happened. And I regularly hear from veterans in New Hampshire who are really frustrated with the lack of action and accountability. And we heard that earlier with our panel of whistleblowers who felt that there was no accountability for the people who we're not doing their jobs in serving veterans. What is being done in terms of this accountability issue? Why hasn't there been more accountability over the waitlist manipulations? So first, I want to emphasize that since uh, this whole scandal broke out, uh, we have taken the issue extremely seriously and have literally for over a year sat down with the Deputy Secretary every single day of the week to go over data, to look at which facilities were having the worst time, and often bringing them in uh, by video conference to find out what's the problem, what's the barrier, how can we help, and so forth. Uh, no senior leaders got bonuses. No one can be have in their performance plan uh, performance metrics related to wait times and so forth. And what we found was that we provided a lot more care, both within VA through extended but, hours but and so, so forth, so and also buying it. Just so we're clear for the record, um, because I have a separate bill on this clawback of the bonuses issue, there were many people who received bonuses who have been acute, you know, who are in positions where unfortunately um, they were engaged in this issue, um, and obviously they received them. And so that's why Senator McCaskill and I actually have a bill to claw that back. But please go on. Yes. Um, uh, well, I was speaking for 2014 um, because Secretary McDonald came in in 2014, so that had been already declared by his predecessor, and uh, Secretary McDonald uh, carried that through. And very importantly, I think the shift was towards don't hide this information. Tell us. Tell us how we can help. Do you need more space? Do you need more people? How is it that we at headquarters can actually help you address some of these barriers and so forth? So we have seen facilities all across the system uh, step up to this challenge, but we've also seen increasing demand as we have gotten better at getting veterans into be seen either in our system virtually by telehealth or by buying care in the community, more and more veterans have come in. So we are still working this hard, and I have to say it is the number one priority for our new undersecretary, Dr. Shulkin. So we are working that very, very hard. As you know, or I think uh, we're likely to be aware, there was uh, a huge array of investigations brought. Uh, some are still ongoing. Um, I don't I would have to get back to you with numbers so that I'm really confident about how many senior leaders are still under investigation for waitlist issues. It has taken quite a bit of time. Well, I would appreciate it. And I, I think that for all of us, there's great frustration in not hearing the accountability. And so it's great to look at data. Yes. But 
real people were involved, unfortunately, Absolutely. in manipulating these wait lists. And when you think about the people not being held fully accountable um, at all levels of the VA for this atrocity, um, what it does is it sends a message to the organization through these other cases we've heard about that's one that, um, to Ms. Lerner's point, of not accountability at each level. And if you, if, you, if you aren't held accountable for what happened with these wait lists, I mean, what will people be held accountable for, I think, is a, a question. So I think all of us want to see more accountability and more people being held accountable. And by the way, the people who are doing a good job, rewarded and um, and instead of being in a position where they bring misconduct to light, uh, supported uh, by saying, let's work to solve the problem that you brought to light, as we heard from our earlier panel. Yes, so, and I wasn't, I hope, not uh, contradicting that, and we will get you an up-to-date accounting of where all this stands. I was just acknowledging that uh, thorough investigations take time, and really our first priority was to make sure that veterans got seen as soon as possible, in other words, to address the patient care issue and then get into the accountability, and frankly, how do we get there? The Secretary, through his efforts, has really uh, led a number of other important areas, um, really strongly encouraging actually requiring uh, facility leaders to get out and talk to the clerks on a regular basis? So I know my time has expired, but but um, Ms. Lerner testified that 30, as I understand it, if I'm correct in this, 35 to 40 percent of the complaints you receive just pertain to the VA. That's correct. And this is across the whole of government, yes. correct? Well, that's a huge number. So I guess what I also want to understand is what are we doing on, in terms of looking at the number of complaints systematically in terms of what issues they repeatedly raise uh, and making sure that there's systematic change being driven by the huge volume that clearly speaks for itself as you look at the whole of government for, for Ms. Lerner to be receiving 35 to 40 percent from one, you know, one agency. Well, I think Ms. Lerner, and if I misquote you, please speak up, uh, did acknowledge that there might be a bit of a senior silver lining there. And I would actually agree with that if people actually do feel free to contact her office. But ultimately, there's a lot of other ways that people can make their voices. So heard. systematically, what are you doing with this? Let's say you've got whatever percentage of whistleblower issues or retaliation, whatever percentage in terms of waiting for care. I'm just coming up with different categories. What are What is the VA leadership and at all levels doing to incorporate the complaints? Uh, obviously, individually, they need to be investigated, but systematically, how is that feedback being addressed by the VA? Um, systematically, uh, certainly we address the feedback once the whole set of investigations has been completed. But in addition to that, we're not waiting for that. We're also looking at data all the time. And we've identified a tool and built a tool to let uh, supervisors and frontline managers, as well as their directors, know if there are scheduling irregularities. This isn't saying you're wrong. What it's saying is we're seeing something in the data that looks really funky here. You need to go look at it. It. And we're encouraging a lot of engagement with frontline employees so that we can hear from them directly. We also look at things as whether people report uh, issues of patient safety that don't actually go to the Office of Special Counsel. We've seen an increase in that this past year, which I actually think is a good thing um, if we are acting to follow up on it and address those issues. Well, Mr. Chairman, as you know, we, we could be on this topic for a long period, but this is something... I can think of no more important issue for this committee to address in terms of more accountability and obviously the issues we heard earlier with the panel on the whistleblowers as well and support for them within this organization. Um, and so I look forward to working with you on this.